And we're back. Welcome back to the Auto Authorities Podcast. My name is Jay and Gerald coming to you live. Oh my goodness. We have been talking about the UAW strike. What are those implications? We've been talking about this car shortage. And today we're going to talk about some very, very important things on how to find an inexpensive car without getting scammed. Are you ready to do this, Gerald? Sure. Let's Let's go. go. Have you ever felt like you were taken for a ride while buying, selling, or repairing your car? Well, not anymore. I'm Jay, and this is the podcast to tell you what to watch out for, whether you are buying, selling, or repairing your car. With over 26 years of automotive experience, we are the Auto Authorities. This podcast is sponsored by iAutoAgent.com. We're real estate agents for cars. Welcome back to the Auto Authorities Podcast. This is Jay, and that is Gerald, and we're coming to you live. And we've been just talking about how these payments are keep going up and up and up on these vehicles, and people can't afford them. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about how to find an inexpensive car, but without getting scammed. Let me tell you, the scam artists are out. Before we get into that, I want to thank our sponsors, iAutoAgent.com. At iAutoAgent, they have two different divisions. First division is working with business owners with fleets as a strategic partner, helping them buy those vehicles that are really hard to find, helping them sell their current vehicles for maximum profit, and helping them handle all those tedious non-revenue generating tasks. They also have the individual side where they help you Find a vehicle, new or pre-owned, nationwide. They will vet the vehicle. They will deal with the dealership. They will tee it up literally where you're only going into the dealership when you approve the deal. And of course, the selling side, the Sell Smart Concierge Program, where they sell the vehicle for you. They market, they list, they show the car. They meet the strange people you don't want to meet. And all done at no cost to you. And then, of course, we have Wrestling with Sales. Tell us a little bit about that, Gerald. Sure. Hey, uh, this week we're going to be doing a little promotion for one of the wrestling promotions that I actually help sponsor, Central States Wrestling here in Kansas City. They are back at the Central States Wrestling Zone at the Lenexa Armory coming up on the 30th of September. Going to talk to a couple of the guys in on that card and just talk about how much work you have to put in to be successful because it translates to everything you do and all these, uh, all these wrestlers, the guys and the ladies that work in these promotions, they have other full-time jobs, and they're pushing to try and break into the big time, try to break into making some major money. They're doing a lot of travel, a lot of extra work. It's really motivating. You can see them at their, at their training schools, the old school, hard work, and just trying to get up to that next level. So it's a it's a good analogy for how can you be successful in what you do because you really have to pour yourself into it and be committed to be successful at work. Really well said, Gerald. And uh, it, it is so, so true. And I know what I've personally gone through just starting my company and the heartache and, and, and truly the heartache that's going on even right now is this automotive industry is just in an absolute pickle. Um, But before we get going, I I wanted to make sure everybody knows where to find the the Auto Authorities podcast. Number one, you can watch us live on the Facebook group page. You can just click the join group button Tuesdays at 12 p.m. Central. You can see it on Facebook and on LinkedIn. You can also go to 19 different channels, iTunes, Pandora, Google Podcasts, all of them. We're even on TV. Uh, we have some some channels that we're on. Uh, you, if you have a Roku, um, Gerald, which channels are they on if they want to watch us well, on TV? Shop Plus TV. Shop Plus TV. Yeah, we go. we're going to start selling some knives, too. We're going to sell Just some kidding. knives. There you go. <laughs> uh, and then finally, uh, most importantly, go to the Auto Authorities uh, YouTube page. We want you to subscribe and no, be notified for any podcast. It helps us out. 
Um, also, leave the comments below. We will personally respond to those comments. And you can go to the autoauthorities.com and send us a personal message. Um, whatever you need, we're here for you. That's why we do this every week. And let's really get into how, like, we're going to talk about how to find an inexpensive car today. Because I think this is the big topic that everybody wants to hear about. But most importantly, not getting scammed. Yeah, because you can go on to the Facebook Marketplace, you can go on to Craigslist, and you can find some cars on there. But uh, honestly, those are probably not cars you want to buy, you know. And there's there's little used car shacks on major streets in every city. And the one thing those used car shacks have in common, the vast majority of the cars they're selling are cars that were traded into franchise dealerships. And dealerships ran them through their service department looked at a five, six, seven, eight thousand dollar repair order estimate to get them worthy of selling and said, uh, yeah, no, get rid of it. Those go to auctions. They go to the Mannheim auction. They go to America's auto auction. They're in every major city too. And they get sold to the little used car shacks for five, seven hundred dollars. The used car shacks, depending on the state, either do a $12 state inspection or do nothing and sell them as is and slap a car on the lot for, you know, whatever, $2,000, $3,000, $4,000, whatever they think they can get. And that's a car they invested 700 bucks in then they sell it as is and it's on you. And you have a two $3,000 paperweight in a couple of weeks when it breaks down and you realize it's $8,000 to get it running. Oh my gosh. I'm going to tell you this folks, what Gerald just said is probably the best golden nugget I probably have ever heard. He is saying this because he cares about you and all these people that are trying to avoid these really large payments. Here's what you have to think about. You've got price of the vehicle and you have cost. You have price because you just want to buy a vehicle and you don't want to have a payment. Mm -hmm. But the truth is you will have a payment. It just won't be to the bank. It'll be to the mechanic. And when you want these really inexpensive cars, there's a process that I'm going to share with you uh, some golden nuggets on how we go about it in our vehicle finder program at iAutoAgent because we help buy these vehicles nationwide for our clients. But there's a process that we go through and it's a very, very strict process. And I'm gonna share some insider secrets with you today. And the very, very first part of the process is once you find the vehicle, look at where that vehicle is. If it's a dealer, look at all their Google reviews and look for patterns in those Google reviews. Just like Gerald said, if you go to Honest Abe Lot, the shack on the side of the road, that mm -hmm. doesn't mean that they're a bad company. But find out all about that dealer. Are there patterns of red flags and bad reviews? And if you're looking at an individual, you better darn well see if they're flipping cars and if they're really a car dealership posing as a private owner. And that is even scarier in one of those places because there's people coming from other parts of the, the the world here to our our states to scam people well and you know the cars are available at auctions you need to get a dealer license but state inspections have been so watered down even if something passes a state inspection it means nothing mm -mm. missouri vehicle inspection i mean heck the car barely has to run and it passes it means absolutely nothing. I, I really tell people because, you know, if you're spending your six, eight thousand dollars to buy a car, because honestly, there's not many two, three thousand dollar cars. A lot of times that's a huge commitment. People have saved up the money or they've listened to uh, financial experts like Dave Ramsey, who tells people not to finance cars, despite the fact that he takes advertising money from the biggest auto lender in the city of Kansas City to endorse them as a Dave Ramsey approved auto lender. 
that. But no. <laughs> he, he's doing good. I mean, heck, uh, if he wants to advertise on uh, the auto authorities, you know, you can you can reach us here. <laughs> it could be Dave Ramsey approved. But but the the hypocrisy of it, telling people to pay cash on cars, people are making six eight thousand dollar purchases. They saved all the money up. They go buy the car. Because they think, hey, this car's good, and I'm going to take it to Firestone, and Firestone's going to inspect it, and then that way everything's good because I got it inspected at this moment in time. That's a horrible decision because you need a car to get to work. You need a car to function, and you just bought something that may well be a ticking time bomb. Yeah. I mean, Jay, there's a reason why health insurance isn't just the free checkup once a year. It isn't, right? You get a free checkup at your doctor every year by the Affordable Care Act. So using the logic that I took the car to Firestone and had it checked out one time, it's a good car, is as insane as medical insurance just being one checkup once a year. Because things break. There's accidents. There's problems. It's it's meaningless. It doesn't matter. And yeah. do you think the Firestone mechanic is really doing a deep dive into every aspect of every car for the $100 inspection? No. I mean, can they find out if the head gasket's leaking? Sure. Can they tell you if the oil's low? Sure. But those are things you probably notice just driving it if you watch the gauges a little bit. So it's yeah. it's a huge, huge problem. I, I agree. And, you know, I, I was brought up like – my family, they pay cash for everything, like everything. And I don't agree with that. I, I don't because, again, you have two different payments. You could either have a payment to the bank or the mechanic, or you can have a payment to both. And and truly, like as expensive as vehicles are now, financing is not a bad option. Now, depending on what the interest rates are, it real like I think as a business owner, I think of cash flow and cash flow is mm -hmm. really, really important to to a business. So I, I I truly do believe in financing. Put put some money down if the if the uh, if the rates are higher. Um, I'm gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you a second golden nugget here for all the they're listening. So this the second piece of the process is do a full history research because. Obviously, we know that Carfaxes, they don't, they're not always 100%, not even close, nor is auto check. But man, like if you go on Carfax and you see that that vehicle has changed hands five times in the last, I'm going to give you an extreme example, two years, that is a major red flag. Don't just mm -hmm. look at a Carfax and say, Oh, it has no accidents. Oh, it didn't have any flood damage. Oh, you know, it's a good car. Look at what the darn thing says. Use that to your advantage. And if you don't have access to Carfax, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to give you a $44.99 Carfax for free. You simply just send me your VIN through the autoauthorities.com or you can leave it in the comments section. And I'll I'll send you a free car fax. You just got to give uh, give us the, your email where you want us to send it to. I just don't want to see anybody get screwed, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, it can tell you a lot. And just looking at a car, I mean, like Carfax's commercials, you can't tell at a glance which car is better than the other. No. I mean, there's a reason why used car managers don't write up the repair orders on a car. They let the mechanics look at it. I, I would go as far as saying if you're making a major investment in a used car, there are good independent dealers, but there is something to be said for having a recognizable brand name in front of a multi-million dollar building. They're not going anywhere. Some other group may buy the dealership, but the Chevy dealership's not going away. The Toyota dealership's not going away. The Honda dealership's not going away. There is a little bit of security invested in buying from a major franchise dealer, you know, because at the end of the day, you're not buying the car from the sales badger, the salesperson. You are buying it from the dealership and he won't stand behind it. The dealership will push comes to shove, you know, major 
franchise dealerships. They're integral parts of your community's economy. They're huge taxpayers. They're big employers. They want things to go well. If you want to hedge against buying a really bad car, buy it from a franchise dealer. Buying it from somebody and taking it to Firestone or Goodyear or whoever and giving them $100 isn't a hedge against anything. Because guess what the little used car shack will say when you come back and say this was a bad car? They'll go, I didn't know I sold it as is. Sorry. They don't care. That's a really good point. And one of the things that we've made a practice of, and this is what I really, one of the things I love about iAuto Agent is we have independent mechanics that look over all the vehicles, people that are not affiliated with the company and truly to take it one step further, if they still want to take it to their trusted mechanic, then we let them. Sure. And you really, it really comes down to reputation, doesn't it? Like you really have to look at what other people say. And granted, when you go to dealerships, you're not going to find people that usually have glowing reviews every single time, but you will see patterns. And that's what one of the things that our agents really, really watch for when we are looking for vehicles is we're looking for those patterns of red flags. And then there's all those, there, there's all these other fees too, that, that you don't know about until the end when you do go to the dealership and then you want to find all those things out ahead of time, especially if you're working on a budget and you're looking for this inexpensive car, the, um, the processing fee just went up to don't quote me on this $562 and some change here in in, in, 565. What what was yours? It's 565. Oh, it's five. So yeah. So five, Uh so that's, that's it. 565. And so, because the the you know the good old state of Missouri is getting twenty percent of that that fee. Well, because... what it's supposedly doing <laughs> at some point in time, Missouri is one of the few states in the country that the dealership doesn't collect sales tax and give you a hard plate at the time of purchase. Mm-hmm. That's why you get to go and enjoy the experience of going to your local DMV, waiting in line and paying your taxes supposedly the increased admin fee is being used to fund a computer system that will allow the counties to integrate their sales tax rates because right now they're not integrated and to allow a system in place so dealerships can collect sales tax like they do in Kansas in Illinois and honestly in most of the country. Uh, Missouri has an amazingly high rate of people who don't pay the sales tax on their cars. So if you're driving around in Missouri and Kansas City and St. Louis and you see a temp tag that expired in 21, it's not that unusual in Missouri. No. So that that's why the admin fees went up to where they did. Now they're talking about it taking years to take effect. Oh, yeah. Okay. At some point, that's what it's supposedly for. So yeah. don't, don't attack the dealers for the uh, admin fees going up. It wasn't their choice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th- well, they they have a choice on what they want to charge, but they're giving away twenty percent of whatever they charge now. We don't charge. I, I I don't believe in processing fees. I don't. We don't charge them. Um, but you know, that's a whole nother topic. But like the next thing to do is like once you once you find the vehicle and you're going through those the Carfax. That's that's really important. But also just go through like car gurus or auto trader and and just see if they're charging in you know a a reasonable amount for for the vehicle like that would be just a kind of a no-brainer i mean we Mm -hmm. do that anyway is is make sure they're charging you a, a reasonable amount and then also once you once you actually find that vehicle Call the dealer's manager if you can. That's a that's another that's hard to do, but you actually can ask questions on the phone and find out what they actually did to the car themselves. Like, sure, they're like, "Well, it didn't need anything." Well, that could be a good thing. That could be a bad thing. You know, it's like we didn't do anything to the car. It's like, well, okay, but they may say they put new tires on the car. You know, that's average. The uh, current average, according to NADA, to get a car from trade-in to the use lot. So it's a car that you're going to sell. So that means it's a reasonably nice car. 
Right. Average amount spent by a dealer is fifteen hundred dollars to get the car from trade into the front line. Easy. That's the average. So yeah. if a dealership's a reputable dealership, if you look on Google and their reviews are above four four, it doesn't have to be perfect because if the reviews are perfect, that means they're raking them. True. So anything above four four I think is fairly good. Yeah, and they're yep. telling you they spent a thousand getting the car ready. That's a pretty good vehicle because they went through it. And trust me, dealership service departments don't give a huge discount to used cars. Used car department is generally the dealership's best customer for service. Oh, of they course. pay the money. Oh, so yeah. if it was a thousand dollars, that's a pretty good car. That's a good indicator that you're probably making a good decision. And if it was three, four thousand dollars. What that means is it was a good car, but it needed a component replaced, maybe AC. Maybe the condenser was bad, but everything else was good. And I'll I'll leave you with one last golden nugget before we leave. And I, I think this is seriously the most important. When you see a car on the internet, have whoever you're speaking to go back out to that car and take fresh photos or a video of that vehicle because I don't know how it is on your end, um, Gerald, but we get hit up all the time from these companies. And what they do is they Photoshop the cars, they Photoshop the background. Mm -hmm. These cars look absolutely perfect in the pictures. And then when you get there, if it is available, that vehicle does not look like it does in the pictures. Sure. And it's there's tons of that stuff going on. We we're like, hey, listen, we're we're just gonna let people know what this vehicle that's one of the things we do is we always mm -hmm. let people know what it lo actually looks like in real life. Hey, you should do it for new cars too. Oh, know, that's a good cars. point. Yeah. Yeah, because here every general motors dealership in the country if you look at the gm dealers new car inventory they're not real pictures that is a corporate vendor that is computer generating pictures mm. and screening them in over a photoshop picture of the dealership none of the new car pictures on gm sites unless the dealership opted out of that program are real pictures Wow. And where you notice it is the wheel patterns are off sometimes because it didn't code properly. Maybe the if it's a two tone car, the two tone pictures may be wrong. The interiors look slightly off. They're not real pictures. So yeah, AI, your AI overlords are uh, intruding into auto listings and you could do it for used cars, too. You can scan in pictures. This is great. So, yeah. Well, these are some amazing golden nuggets and hopefully that how to find an inexpensive car that not get scammed that really hit a note with you. Again, we want to hear your comments below. Subscribe to the Auto Authorities on YouTube and we will see you next week. Peace. Okay.